Hello and welcome. Today, we return to the visualizer that illustrates just how random the random number generator is that's built into the Coco's basic ROM. We extend our code to get back two random bytes instead of just one. But there are issues. In today's very special episode of Coco Town, it will be interactive. You will get a chance to see if you could figure out what the problem is. So get ready to hit that pause button. It's Coco Time! Once upon a time, I had an assembly routine which would just call the random number generator from the ROM and then increment a counter. This is 256 counters, and depending on what got returned, such as hex 96, we would offset into this range of counters, go to hex 96, and increment whatever character was there to the next character in the sequence. This allowed me to view the pattern of randomness, but it was only generating random numbers from 0 to 255. It did this by simulating a call to RND of 256, and then subtracting one from the result. And it would just continue to do this over and over again. Since this was written in assembly language and not in basic, I had to directly initialize the bytes of the floating point accumulator so you would have the equivalent of the value of 256. In this case, my exponent is 9 greater than hex 80, which means my exponent with the base of 2 is 9. And the mantissa simply has one byte set where the high bit is 1 and everything else is 0. And by doing this, I move the binary point from just before the 1 to 9 spaces to the right, and that gave me 256. But this wasn't very efficient because I wasn't really making full use of the return value. Notice how the high byte is always 0 since I'm just getting numbers from 0 to 255. Why not get a full 16 bits back? Then I can get two random bytes for the price of 1. By changing my exponent from hex 89 to hex 91, I'm moving the binary point to the right an additional 8 places. As with all my ingenious ideas, this worked great. For the first call, I got 2 bytes, 8f and 7f, and you can see those counters got incremented. On the next call, it worked great again. On the next call, it worked great again. On the next... Whoa! Did I just get a basic error from my assembly language routine? Perhaps you're thinking the problem is that if I actually ended up with the random number returned being exactly 65,536, that would be one more than the maximum value I could store in a 16-bit word. But what do you think the odds are that just on the third time, that's the value I got back? In fact, as a hint, that is not the value I got back. What was causing that error? A. I'm a numbskull who shouldn't be allowed near a keyboard. B. The emulator got horked. C. The integer conversion routine requires integers in the range from negative 32768 through 32767. Or D. Both A and C. The answer is C. We can step through the code in the MAME debugger to see exactly what's going on. Here's the call to the random number routine. And actually, this is just fine. The problem is a couple instructions later where I call into the int conversion routine. That takes what's ever in fapal and converts it to d. Up here, we can look directly at fapal, which is stored in 4f. We have the exponent, and then we have the four mantissa bits right after. First time around, everything is fine. Second time around, everything is fine. Everything is still fine here. But here, we're about to hit the problem. Can you figure out in your head what the value of the floating point number is if our exponent is hex 90 and our mantissa is 8782? Well, I don't want to, so I added it to my handy dandy floating point conversion routine. And when the Coco does the heavy lifting for us, we see that the value is 42,882, very comfortably within the range of a 16 bit word, but outside the range of a 16 bit signed word. Just as an aside, the vast majority of Color Basic does not care where your integer lives. For example, we could literally convert a float to an integer 
with a very large magnitude. And it will do it just fine. There are only a couple places in Color Basic where that integer conversion routine is used. For example, you can do a logical knot on a number. But you'd better not use a logical knot on a number that's out of range. I guess the idea is that there are very few places where Color Basic actually needs an integer to sit in a single register. So only in those few places would it actually call the integer conversion routine, and therefore only in those places does it really require the integer be in range. I could even do some crazy stuff. But anyway, back on topic, I had an even better idea on how to get multiple bytes out of the random number generator. Every time the random number routine is called, we get a mantissa just filled, brimming with random bits. So why do all this conversion to integers? Why not just take the first two bytes of the mantissa and those can be my random bytes? So now my code just calls rnd with a parameter of zero. That will give us a random number between zero and one. And we accomplish that by ensuring that the exponent gets set to zero and the mantissa bytes get set to zero as the parameter. And then rather than doing any conversion, immediately after calling rnd, I simply load d with the value of the first two mantissa bytes. This is the location of the exponent, so this plus one takes us to the first mantissa byte. And since d is 16 bits, this will give us the first and second mantissa bytes. And now when I run it, no errors at all. And it properly uses both bytes that get returned. But if you let it run for a while, you'll start to notice a problem. Do you see the problem yet? What if I speed it up and go into turbo mode? Maybe you see the problem now. There seems to be a very strong bias toward the bottom half of those offsets. It seems like suddenly it's not so even anymore. Why would that be? Hint number one. Since there are 256 possible byte values, the lower half of these offsets represents bytes greater than or equal to hex 80. Hint number two. R&D always normalizes the floating point accumulator before returning. See this video if that made no sense to you. Why is there a bias for the bottom half? A. Gravity. B. The emulator got horked. C. Mantissa byte 1 is always greater than or equal to hex 80. D. No bias, just wait a bit longer. As long as it hasn't evened out, you simply haven't waited long enough. The answer is C. Mantissa byte 1 is always greater than or equal to hex 80. When normalizing, all the bits of the mantissa shift to the left until the first byte of the mantissa has the high bit set. That means mathematically that that first byte is always going to be at least hex 80. Note that some floating point implementations assume the high bit is always set and instead use that bit for the sign. But Fapau does not do this. Check out this video for a more exhaustive explanation. As a result, the high byte that gets returned from the random number routine is always going to be bigger than hex 80, since that's going to be the first byte of the mantissa. So the first byte is always going to be in this lower half. Meanwhile, the second byte will sometimes be less than hex 80 and sometimes greater. So half the time, the second byte will be in the bottom half, and all the time, the first byte will be in the bottom half. So that gives us a pretty strong bias toward the bottom half. Can you think of a one character fixed to this problem? How's about that? Instead of using the first two bytes of the mantissa, let's use the second two bytes of the mantissa. There's no rule what any of the bits need to be in any of the bytes of the mantissa except for the first byte. So bytes two and three are free to be completely random. With that fix in place, both bytes are free to roam the entire range between zero and 255. And if we let it fly, and even in turbo mode, things look pretty even now. 
As always, thank you for watching. I guess the idea is anywhere they really needed an integer to sit in a single register, they would use the integer conversion routine, and they're just very... ...for a keyboard. The 8 through 32... Sub uh, 767. As an aside, that conversion routine... Integer lives. A single register. It totally worked, I, I promise. See, I know what I'm talking about.